Thank you for coming out to the Soapbox. It's so great to see everybody here. I am Mary Mosman, and I am honored to serve you and everybody else in Iowa as the state auditor. I do want to talk about auditing. Are we cool with that? OK. But I did think I'd begin with just telling you how I became your state auditor and how I got involved in public service. So quite frankly, it wasn't a very direct route. I'm a very proud farmer's daughter. My parents are here today. They're over right there. Mom and dad, thank you for being here. Love you very much. I went to Iowa State University. I was a music major. I wanted to play the piano. I added English to that. I thought I was actually probably going to be a teacher someday. Auditing. Accounting was not in my goals. While I'm at Iowa State, I, made, I met a very dynamic young man. We dated fast, we got married fast. In fact, we got married 36 years ago today. So happy anniversary, sweetheart. Still one of the best days of my life, so yeah, so. That being said, we did what a lot of young couples did. We decided to rotate. One of us would go to college while the other one of us would work. During one of my jobs, one of my many jobs, I happened to get a job as an accountant in a small company in Nevada, Iowa. And quite frankly, I loved that job. I did everything that you could do as an accountant in a small company. Did their payroll, their payables, their receivables, their profit and loss, started their cost accounting. I loved it. I was one of two people who worked there. My boss quit and I was alone there for a while. I talked to the owner of the company thinking, opportunity. And the owner of the company said, absolutely not. He wanted a certified public accountant. He wanted a CPA to lead his accounting department for the company that he built from the ground up. So that told me everything I needed to know. I went back to Iowa State, and I, this time in the business college, in the accounting department. So let's make it a little more interesting. We're a young married couple. I'm taking classes and working. Most of my classes were at night. I'm working, we're having a family. And even though I was very blessed to have my mother and one of my cousins doing daycare for me, it got very, very complicated. So I decided to open a home daycare center and take care of our girls at home. We had four daughters at this point in time. And one of my families was a county official. So during drop off and pick up, we were talking a lot about county government, talking a lot about the benefits of public service. Turns out that the county auditor does payroll, does payables, does financial reporting, has budget maintenance. So I was just thinking this county auditor could be right up my line. I did put my name on the ballot. I was very fortunate to prevail in that election and I couldn't have been happier for 10 years serving in public service, making sure the taxpayer's money was used appropriately. I'm gonna skip several years here, and when there was a vacancy in the state auditor's office, I couldn't have been more pleased. I just thought, this is public service, not only of one county, but of the entire state, and it's doing public finance with your, with your taxpayer money. So, long story short, again, I will just say I'm honored to serve you as Iowa's Auditor of State. What we do in our office, I'm gonna tell you it's very exciting stuff. It has a positive impact on every single person in Iowa. Every tax dollar that you pay, it goes to government at some level. State or local is what I'm gonna talk about. Our audit work of state and local government officials helps make sure that your tax dollars are being used appropriately. We average about 150,000 audit hours each year. We are the statutory auditor for state and we have oversight responsibility for local governments. And these audits, they're not optional. They are mandatory. These audits must be conducted by a licensed CPA who works within a CPA firm. The State Auditor's Office is a CPA firm. We have been for many years, since 1979 when Dick Johnson took over as State Auditor. We have had a State Auditor who is a CPA for, the, for four, almost 40 consecutive years. So that being said, that's the main portion of our job. We also are the state's leading CPA firm when it comes to investigating when government officials are misusing your tax dollars. We had an important threshold earlier this year. In March, I issued my 100th fraud report, and I reached that threshold faster than any other auditor in Iowa's history. 
those fraud reports, they tell, and I've issued more since, so they have tallied getting close to $14 million. And these are your tax dollars that were collected, but did not go for the proper public purpose. For a lot of those cases, they went towards personal benefit instead of public benefit. So what this showed us along the way in the five years that I've been your auditor is that we need to do something to help reduce the potential for fraud happening with your tax dollars. So we were very excited to roll out a new initiative, a new mechanism to help make sure that the elected officials who are the first line of defense, making sure your tax dollars are taken care of, making sure they know how to provide oversight and accountability and transparency with your tax dollars. And so they could recognize the red flag indicators when fraud symptoms might be taking place in their government entities. So we are just very proud in our office to serve you in this capacity. We all serve in our own way. I think many of you have heard our unofficial office motto, our office motto is, in God we trust, but everybody else we audit. So, and I do want to give a shout out to the fantastic people that work in the state auditor's office. We have an office of about 100 people. They are professional. They are dedicated. They are committed. They know the impact they have on your lives. So this is a great group of individuals that I am just truly grateful for to be working with, and I'm hoping to work with them another four years. But let's now talk a little bit about this auditor's office race. I do have an opponent that has a very different message than my message. And the, the main thing that I want to point out is the difference between the two, the Republican candidate and the Democratic candidate. I am a certified public accountant. My Democratic opponent is not a CPA. I think there's a libertarian on the ballot too. I'm not positive, but I am the only CPA who's running for state auditor. And that does make a difference. It does matter. As I said, these, these financial reports that most government entities are required to have, they must be conducted by a licensed CPA who works within a CPA firm. If the elected state auditor is not a CPA, the office loses status as a CPA firm and therefore would not be able to conduct these financial statement audits, which would have a costly impact to Iowa taxpayers because the rates of a private CPA firm are typically two to three times more per hour than the rates of the state auditor's office. So that could have a cost impact to all of our state, a lot of our local government entities, and therefore to our taxpayers. So that's why I am eager to make sure the message gets out there, how important it is to keep the CPA firm, um, to keep the state auditor's office as a CPA firm by electing or re-electing a CPA. That being said, I humbly will be asking for your support this upcoming November. It, it truly is an honor to work for the people of Iowa. We are n there is no place for partisanship in the state auditor's office. One thing that we have found, tax dollars. They're not red for Republican. They are not blue for Democrat. Tax dollars are green. We help take care of taxpayer money. That's our goal. We have no room for partisanship in our office. If you are going to misuse, taxpayer money, we will be coming after you in an investigative manner. So that being said, I thank you for being here today. I look forward to the rest of the campaign season. Thank you, Iowa. It's an honor to serve you.